church, we believe in God, the one and only true God who sent his only son to die for all of humanity. We believe in a perfect love that casts out all fear. So our mission is simple, to love. Love with no limits, no boundaries, no exceptions made and no corners cut. We believe that only light can drive out darkness and only love can drive out hate. We are a church of sinners saved by grace. We believe that Jesus is not to make bad people good, but to bring dead people to life. So this, this is an invitation to the destined about their destiny. This, an invitation to change history forever. An invitation to join us on this journey as we fearlessly love the city. Because music can be a pathway to God when we ask, when we seek, when we knock. So here's where I've been kind of camping out. We had our best week ever last week. Some of us had a good time at best week ever. Did you guys have a good time at best week ever? And listen, some of us couldn't come to best week ever, but this is going to be just like best week ever. Every Wednesday night right here at 707. And here's the verse that's kind of captured my imagination that I want to sit on together for a few minutes. It's from a book called First John, chapter 4, verse 7. Let me show you this verse, and then I just want to unpack it first for a couple seconds as we talk about asking, seeking, and knocking. First John 4, 7 says this, Those who are loved by God. Touch someone next to you and say, I love you. And then guys, if you just touched a girl and said that, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, those who are loved by God, not like romantic love, but love like you would do anything for them. How many of you have a dog? All right, hands down. How many of you have a cat? Okay, hands down. I got to make a confession. My name is John. I love 707. I love dogs. I do not love cats. I believe that cats are evil. In fact, in fact, I would venture to say that cats are from Satan. Don't believe me? Because some of you are like, but, but John, you haven't seen my little pussy cat. Her name is Snowflake, and she's just a chubby, fuzzy, little kitty cat. And when I'm watching Stranger Things, little Snowflake sits at the edge of my bed, and little Snowflake licks herself and looks at me, licks herself and looks at me, and she's so cute. No. You know what that cat is thinking? As it licks itself and looks at you, if it had a little thought bubble, its thought bubble would be this, I could kill her. <laughs> that cat, I promise you, if that cat, little snowflake, if it was bigger than you, snowflake would eat you. <laughs> and it would be a slow death because snowflake would say, and this is for feeding me Kit Kat. It would slowly, slowly devour you. Cats are evil. But dogs are awesome. Who has big dogs? Like big, big dogs. All right, now who has little dogs? You know what I love to do every year? I like to go down to Frankenmuth at Memorial Day to watch the dog festival. Anybody been to that outdoor dog festival? It's awesome. They've got like big Labradors that jump into pools and then they've got the, the big sheep dog that's hurting the sheep. But you know what my favorite part is of the dog show in Frankenmuth? The wiener dog races. <laughs> and you know what the wiener dogs are. They're like these stretched out hot dogs, right? In fact, touch the person next to you and go. <laughs> and girls, if a guy just did that to you? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love the wiener dog races. I love to watch those wieners run because I have a wiener dog. You know what his name is? Chewbacca. Chewbacca, the wiener. Because he could tear your arm off. I call him Chewy for short. But here's the thing, Chewy, when people come to the house, like my buddy Ian, he comes to the house, I have a three-year-old, a three-year-old little boy named Seth who can't talk right. You ever heard like a little kid that can't talk right? 
When he sees my buddy Ian come, he can't say Ian. He gets excited and he wants to say Ian, but that's not what comes out of his mouth. Do you know what he says? He goes, Ian! I love you, Ian. And he is this big guy with a beard, and my little three-year-old hugs his leg and goes, Ian, I love you. And then the wiener dog comes running behind him and takes his other leg and says, Ian, I love you, and shows him another way that he loves him, right? And then you know what the wiener dog does? He piddles. He piddles. Kid, you watch Bryce to each other. Let's rip its head off. My little wiener dog makes messes everywhere, but I love my little wiener dog, right? If he runs away like last week, I opened the door to get the mail, and Chewy, Chewbacca the wiener, he went running, right? And my little girl, my little six-year-old Ainsley, she goes, Chewy, come back! She believed that the dog was not going to come back, and I said, baby, he's coming back because he's hungry. So I yelled the magic word, treat, and he comes running back. When I yell, treat, treat, he comes running back. And I love my little wiener dog, but I don't love my wiener dog the same way I love I love my kids or the way I love my wife or the way that you love you know, your parents or your loved ones, right? God loves you and me more than we love our pets. Those who are loved by God, 1 John 4, 7 says, those who are loved by God, and let me show you the whole verse. Those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another because God is love. Now, you see the verse on the screen? Let's do something together. I want you to stand up. Stand up! On your feet, 707. And this is 1 John 4, 7. I want you to read out loud with me this verse, and I want you to read it like you mean it. 1 John 4, 7. You ready? Those who are loved by God Continually pour from you to one another because God is love. Make some noise. Just sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. So this verse, let me unpack it real quick. I got like just two minutes left with you. First John 4, 7. Those who are loved by God, that's you and me. God loves you. You may not believe in God, but God believes in you. God is cheering for you. Even on your worst day. God is for you, not against you. Even when your friends betray you. Even when people pick on you online. Even when people say, no, you can't. Did you know that the word can't is not in God's vocabulary? Our God looks at you and says, yes, you can. Our Father leans forward and says, I believe in you. All of heaven is cheering for you because you are loved by God. And then the verse says, let his love continually pour from you to one another. See, this is the name of the game. Everybody wants love. Think about this for a second. When was some time that someone rejected you? Just think about it. When was a time that someone betrayed you or burned you or humiliated you or made fun of you? Those jerks, they own a lot of cats. Nobody wants to feel rejected. Can I tell you a true story? Look at me for a second. I want to tell you just a quick story. This happened five days ago, right here in this main stage. After one of the messages during Best Week Ever, you guys broke up into your teams, and we're going to break you up into teams in just a little bit. And if you weren't Best Week Ever, don't freak out. We're going to get you into a team. And as I was getting off the stage, this girl came up to me, and she says, hey, Pastor John, can I talk to you for a second? I said, absolutely. And she had her friend with her, and I don't think she's here tonight, but I'm not going to use names. All right, this is a safe place and I don't want to embarrass anybody, but she pulled me aside and we sat down. She goes, I have some questions. And I said, that's good because Jesus said to ask, seek, and knock. 707 is a safe place to ask honest, raw questions, right? And so she looks me in the eyes and she goes, are you gonna judge me? And I said, yeah. No, I didn't say that. I said, wait, what? What are you talking about? And she goes, every church I've ever walked into, I was told that I don't belong here. No. 
And she started opening up, and, and I started getting teary-eyed as she was sharing some pain of rejection. She said the last church that she was in, I don't know who it was, and that doesn't matter the story. She said she showed up one Sunday wearing all black. And I was like, that's cool. I said, did everybody else think so? She goes, no. The pastor singled me out and said, I can't wear all black. And I just said, I'm so sorry. Because Jesus really doesn't give a rip what you're wearing. He said, Jesus walked around in rags and barefoot. He doesn't care if you're dressed up or dressed down. So he just cares about your heart. And she started to cry. And then when you see someone cry, do you ever start crying? It's sort of like when you see someone puke and then you want to puke. <laughs> you guys ever seen that movie, The Goonies? Yeah. 1985, you've got to watch The Goonies. Greatest movie, well, second greatest movie ever, okay? The Goonies is all about these guys and they're going after this pirate treasure and Thanos is in the movie, but he's like a teenager. It's cool, Thanos rides a tricycle, it's awesome. And in the Goonies, there's this, there's this kid named Chunk. And Chunk is made fun of. Like, the, Chunk wants to join the Goonies, and they say, do the truffle shuffle. He's like, no, Mike, you don't make me do the truffle shuffle. He says, do it! And so he lifts up his shirt, and he goes, oh, 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 oh. and the kids laugh at him, and they say, okay, you can join the Goonies, right? And so uh, later, he gets caught by the bad guys, and they're gonna stick his hand in a blender, and they say, tell us everything! And Chunk, he's like crying, he's in sixth grade, he's like, no, I'm not gonna tell you everything! And, and the Fratellis are like, tell us everything! He goes, okay, okay, okay! And they said, start from the beginning! He goes, okay, okay! <laughs> this one time, when I was in third grade, I went to the movies, and I sat on the balcony, and then I leaned over the side, and this is horrible, guys, this is bad. I made this sound, like, <gasps> just kidding, but then the people below thought I was really puking, and so somebody started throwing up, and then another pusher stood, they showed up, and they threw up, and then everybody was throwing up, and I felt so bad. <laughs> so what was I talking about? Um, oh, so yeah, so you see someone puke, and then you feel like puking, right? Sort of like when someone cries, you feel like crying, and so this girl, this is a true story. Happened right here five nights ago. She's, she's welling up with tears, and I just kind of listened. Man, my heart broke. Because nobody should feel rejection. Right? Nobody should feel judged. And then she started talking about, you know, here's some choices I've made in life. Does that mean I can't be here? And I said, no, you can totally be here. I've made stupid mistakes too in my life. And then she started talking about, you know, sexuality and, and choices and things. And, and I just kind of listened, and, I, and at the end, you know, she kind of looked at me like, are you going to kick me out? And I said, man, I'm so glad that you're here. And I'm so, so sorry about what happened in the past. Because listen, nobody wants to feel rejected. Nobody wants to feel judged and pushed down. And Jesus did not come to judge people. Jesus didn't come to condemn people. You know what's the most famous Bible verse, John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Do you know what the next verse says? John 3, 17 says that Jesus came not to judge the world, but to rescue the world. Because Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Even though I've made mistakes, even though you've made mistakes. Jesus never rejected people. In fact, Jesus hung out with the losers, the misfits, the worst people you could think of, and the religious people. That's who Jesus had the most venom for. So we'll put this verse again. 1 John 4, 7 says, Those who are loved by God, you and I, we are loved by God. Let his love continually pour from you to one another. So here's the deal. Guys, we have a clean slate. You have a clean slate, a fresh start. 707 can be a place on Wednesday nights where everyone's welcome and nobody's perfect. 707 can be a place where you can ask questions, you can bring your hurts and your doubts, you can be real and raw, and yes, we can have fun and jump around and laugh, and we're gonna do lots of that too and make memories, but this is a safe 
place. If we're loved by God, then we get to pour out love to one another. That means when we break up into teams a little bit, you know, and we start talking about our day, nobody, listen to me, nobody has permission to make fun of somebody else. At 707, we radically accept one another. Nobody has permission to judge or point fingers in this place because Jesus didn't judge or point fingers. We want to pour out love to one another and just accept each other because no one should feel rejected by God's house. And this verse that says we get to pour out love to one another says it's because God is love. Those three words can change everything. God is love. Can you say those three words out loud with me? God is love. If you want to know what love looks like, you look at Jesus. That's what love looks like. And I don't know about you, but I want this place Wednesday nights to be a safe place to just come. You can bring your friends and we're not going to judge each other. We're not going to make fun of each other and be like, oh, I don't want to sit in here. Like, dude, wouldn't it be awesome if we just like all came together? It doesn't matter what our skin color is. It doesn't matter if we're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if we're clean or smelling. Well, it doesn't matter if you're smelly. We're some deodorant people. Come on. Two box Walgreens. Check it out. But wouldn't it be awesome if your friends could come here and even if they're not into religion and stuff, they feel loved? Will you guys join me in helping create a place on Wednesdays where everyone's welcome and nobody's perfect? So here's the game plan. Here's where I need your help, okay? I need your help. There's three things we want to try and do these next several Wednesday nights when we come together at 707, okay? We're going to try and do three different things, okay? Can you do this? Hold up the number three, all right? So there's three stooges. There's three people in the Trinity. Three things for 707, set DVR to record. Okay, you ready? The first is this. We're gonna do once a month, 707 rally. Touch someone next to you and say, 707 rally. 707 rally. <laughs> rally. This is 707 rally. When Kingdom Sound comes out and they're live and loud, and did you like the band? Wasn't that awesome? Once a month on Wednesdays, we're going to do 707 Rally. You bring your friends, loud band, a short message, and then we break up into teams. And that's it. 707 Rally is what we're doing right now. And 707 Rally, here's what I want you to do. If you don't invite a friend, I want you to bring something with you. Either bring a friend or, listen to me, look at me. At 707 Rally, I want you to bring your Bible and your notebook. Y'all got three Bibles last week. If you're a first time guest tonight, you just got a swag bag with a free Bible inside and a notebook. Remember that red notebook that says 707? Next Wednesday, we're gonna have another 707 rally. You either bring a new friend or you bring your Bible and notebook. And bonus if you do both. Because during the message, I want you to go deeper with God. And you're only going to go deeper with God if you've got his book and you're taking notes. Sound good? Once a month, we're going to do 707 Rally. We're going to do Rally next Wednesday again because we've got a guest worship leader coming next Wednesday, y'all. It's a guy, he wants a job here. And so we told him he has to audition for you. And so next week, here's what we're going to do. 707 Rally next Wednesday night. Bring your friends, bring your Bible, bring your notebook. And when my buddy takes the stage, I want you to just rock out. I don't want you to stand there and be like, I don't know this song. I don't know this song. I want you to just go, boom, right into it. I want you to blow this guy away and make him scared. I want you to freak out the guy. I want you to make him pee his pants on stage. All right, can you do that for me? Very good. That's the first thing. 707 Rally. Second thing real quick is 707 Groups. Touch someone next to you and say 707 Groups. No, you didn't say it right. You didn't say it right. You didn't say it right. No, no, no. No, you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy. One of the ten greatest movies of all time. Touch someone next to you and say, I am Groot. So you got to say it like that. So now, 
touch someone next to you and say 707 groups. Okay, that was horrible, but we'll let it fly. So, the other three Wednesday nights of the month. So the first Wednesday we're going to do rally. The other three Wednesdays we're going to do groups on Wednesday nights. So you'll still come here. You'll do some competition. Maybe it'll be like underground church. Maybe it'll be a color wars. I don't know. I don't know what it'll be. But then you'll also get to get in your small groups. And it's going to be awesome because Christian, our buddy Christian, is going to film these short little teachings for your group. And then you're going to talk about it. You're going to go deeper together. It's going to be awesome. 707 groups. So touch someone next. You say 707 groups. And last but not least, this is the craziest thing of all. This is the end. I'm going to bring it in for a landing. The third thing we're going to try and do at 707 is something that we're going to call student section. Let's write that out. <laughs> Rod's in the back going, no, John. No. No. How about student section? Rod, come up here and give us a, a, a movement for this one. Come on, Rod. Everybody say, Rod, 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 Bring it on home, Rod. For 707 student section, we need some sort of uh, movement or a kind of sound or what can what can we do, bro? Student section. I didn't know you could say that in church. Oh, you say that. All right, all right. So listen, listen. Here comes Uncle Rod. He's gonna give us something for student section, and then I'll explain what it is. Suspense is killing us. 707 student section! Student section! Y'all gotta do it behind me though. Y'all ready? One, two, three. 707 student section! Yeah, give it a This is the craziest thing of all, so listen up, listen up, listen up. You can get his autograph later. Listen up. Did you know Rod just released an album? church this weekend for sale. You should grab his album. It's awesome. Here's what 707 student section is. It's this. When you break up in your teams, wouldn't it be cool? Listen to me. Wouldn't it be cool? Do you guys want to rock this world? Yeah. Do you want to make a difference? Yeah. Here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. It would be cool if your team, if your group picked a worship time to come on Saturday night or Sunday morning at Life Church and you all sit together in a student section and you worship your faces off and then you turn around and serve during one of the worship services. Uh, if teenagers, listen to me, if the student section was leading the way in worship on the weekend and then serving on the weekend, you're going to put everybody else to shame. They're going to be like, what just happened? Because if we love others, we should show it by having a student section. Does that sound like fun? So I gotta give you some homework. I gotta give you some homework. I wanna give you something. I wanna give you something. I'm gonna ask the adult leaders to pass these babies out. This is called the Life Book. It's not very long, it's very short. I want you to get a copy of the Life Book. I need the leaders to pass this out very quickly right now, please. And this Life Book you're gonna take with you tonight. And listen to me, look at me. Here's what you're gonna do. Between now and next Wednesday, between now and 707 Rally next Wednesday night, I want you to read through this little book. And then next Wednesday, come back and be ready to share one thing, just one thing in this life book that grabbed your imagination. Something that stood out to you. And if you bring a friend next Wednesday, we'll give them a copy of the life book. I really want you to do this. You can turn off the Xbox for five minutes each day and read this for five minutes. Read through it between now and next Wednesday, and let's see what God does in us and through us together. Did everybody get the life book? We like free stuff. That's your homework. Read through this. 
come back next Wednesday ready to share one thing that stood out to you.